the first thing that you need to instill into your child very early on and I'm talking in the early years of your child while the child is 18 months while the child is two years you need to instill respect in the child you need to teach your children to respect people in authority now if you as the parent every time a police car drives past you cuss the policeman out your child is not going to grow up respecting authority your children should never be allowed to call adults by their first name don't introduce an adult to your child and say susie meet bob that is nonsense you say meet mr green or meet aunt helen all right now i know we live in a society and this is not just a cultural thing hear me one of the reasons why our our society has degenerated and there is no regard for authority and there is no discipline in our schools is that from an early age we teach children that they are equal to adults that's not what my bible says welcome to maximize live the television broadcast from new wine church london jesus said i have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. You will never be the same again. It is important to see yourself as a partner with God in making disciples of your children. Who says amen to that? We must recognize that as parents, you are the first authority figure in the life of your child. Long before your, your child gets to know the authority of God, the child knows your authority and the way your child responds or embraces your authority will determine how they respond to and embrace the authority of God. As a matter of fact, in the eyes of your child, you are the first God, in quote, in their life. Amen? There are many people, I interact with a lot of people today, uh, not a lot, a, a number of people today, who say to me, because I did not have a father figure in my life, I find it difficult to embrace the love of God as a father. There is a particular lady, uh, not in this country, that I mentor, and she says to me, when I want to think about God, all I need to do is think about you, Pastor Tyre. Now, that is a scary thing, but that is the reality. That is how children are. Um, I'm reminded of the story of a particular uh, mother who wanted to teach a two-year-old two how to pray, how to say grace over food. There was a particular week, the father was away on a trip, and she said to the little uh, boy, would you pray? And the boy closed his eyes and said I love you daddy amen because his only picture of God was his father so we need to recognize that we play that role in the lives of our children I am making that emphasis because I'm going to say something later that is very very important in this regard you are the first authority figure in the life of your child long before your child goes to school long before the Sunday school gets involved or the church you have the opportunity to shape the character of your child and to determine and chart the course of his life. That's what Proverbs 22 verse 6 is all about. Now, assuming that kids spend about seven hours a day at school, would that be accurate? About seven hours a day. Assuming that they spend about 180 days a year at school, that means that our children, ladies and gentlemen, spend 1,260 hours a year in school. How many hours are there in a year in London? 8,760 hours. The same number of hours a year in Japan. All right? Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, that means our children spend only 14.4% of their time in school. 14. If you want to think of their waking hours, 21.5%. Yet, we seem to blame the educational system for the way our children are turning out. We have them for four feet of the time, and we had them for 40,000 hours before the teacher ever saw them, and all of a sudden, it's the fault of the teacher. Maybe we need to reorientate how we look at this particular issue. Now, in approaching the whole subject of discipline, we need to go back to that expression in Proverbs 22, verse 6, train up. Somebody say, train up. Remember that we, in the first uh, message of this series, we agreed that that word train up has two connotations. First, it means to provoke the appetite and thirst for that which is good. And the description here is that of a midwife 
who puts uh, uh, the juice of dates on a newborn baby's tongue and, and gums and palate to initiate the reflex of sucking. It talks about developing a taste for something good, accepting that which is good. But we also agreed that secondly, it means to conquer and subdue a strong will or to create an aversion for that which is evil. And the description here is that of putting uh, ropes in the mouth of a wild horse in an attempt to break it. So when you discipline your child, you must have these two connotations at the back of your mind. It's a total package, an appetite for what is good and an aversion for what is evil. In essence, to discipline your child is to allow good behavior to succeed or to allow bad behavior to fail. Who says amen? Remember that whatever is rewarded will be repeated. And every time your child finds that bad behavior of any kind succeeds, they are reinforced to carry it out again. Are you hearing me today? Discipline, ladies and gentlemen, is your way of saying yes to the good and your way of saying no to the bad. You permit, say permit, or promote, say promote, that which is good. Those two expressions mean two different things. To permit means to allow it to happen. Sometimes it's not taking off as it should, and you promote the process. You permit or promote that which is good, and on the other hand, you prevent, say prevent, or prohibit, say prohibit, that which is bad. Now, perhaps the whole concept of discipline can be summed up in one passage in the book of Proverbs. Come with me to Proverbs 29, verse 15. Proverbs 29, 15. Proverbs 29, verse 15. Are you there? The rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Somebody say the rod, say rebuke. I want you to brand those two words in your mind this morning. The rod and rebuke. The King James says the rod and reproof. There are two factors that we see here that the Bible says brings wisdom, bring wisdom to a child. One factor is about action, the rod. The other factor is about words, rebuke. Listen to the living Bible in this verse. Scolding and spanking a child help him to learn. Left to himself, he brings shame to his mother. And I want you to begin to think about the whole concept of discipline from those two angles, re, re, the rebuke or reproof and the rod, scolding and spanking. Both of them, ladies and gentlemen, are necessary. One of them applies to the inner life of the child and another applies to the outer life of the child and many times you need to stimulate both in order to move a child in the direction that you want them to go let's open this up just a little bit more the word discipline you don't find it very common in our bible as a matter of fact in the king james bible in the king james version the word discipline appears only once in the book of job but there's a word that is very close to the word discipline that you will find a lot in the book of Proverbs, and it's the word correction. Somebody say correction. Now, in the book of Proverbs, that word correction has been translated from two different Hebrew words. They're different, but they're very similar. Let's look at those two words to help us understand this whole package of discipline. The first one is in Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews 3, verses 11 and 12 Hebrews 3 11 and 12 my son do not despise the chastening of the Lord nor detest his correction do you see the word correction there for whom the Lord loves he corrects just as a father the son in whom he delights now the word corrects in verse 12 of Proverbs 3 comes from the Hebrew word yakhag I will spell it to you y a h K double A G Y A H K double A G. Now this word means to instruct, to give direction, to convince, to reason with, to argue with, or to correct. 
The word here, ladies and gentlemen, describes verbal activity, the use of words to try to guide and direct a person in the right path. Now, the second word that we see that is translated correction in the book of Proverbs is in Proverbs 22, verse 15. So go back to Proverbs 22 now. Proverbs 22, verse 15. It says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Now, the Hebrew word here is the word yasha, Y-A-H-S-A-A-R, Y-A-H-S-A-A-R. Now, if you look at those two words, you will see that they are very similar. They are very similar, and the reason why is that both of them achieve the same thing. Yet, there are two different approach. This word here means to chastise, to punish, to inflict blows with the intent of making sore. It means to create pain. It describes a physical activity. So we see two steps here. How many steps? Two steps. The first step is to teach. The second ch step is to chastise or punish in order to enforce the teaching. Now, it's important, ladies and gentlemen, that you never punish a child for something that you have not first taught them about. Amen. Let's take a good look now at these two aspects. Let's talk about teaching. There are three things that you need to teach your children. How many things? Three things you need to teach your children. The first one, and I think the most important of the three of them, and this will surprise you, is respect. Somebody say respect. The first thing that you need to instill into your child very early on, and I'm talking in the early years of your child, while the child is 18 months, while the child is two years, you need to instill respect in the child. Seven key areas of respect that you want to instill in your child. Number one, and again, most important of all, is respect for you. Respect for you. Again, why is this the most important? Why didn't I say respect for God? Remember that you are the first authority figure in the life of your child. If your child does not learn to respect you, you have doomed them to a life of never respecting any authority figure. If your child will not respect you, trust me, that child will not respect God. Because whatever you teach that child out about God will flow out of their respect for you and the things and values that you stand for. Is this making sense? If he doesn't learn to respect you, he will not respect any other authority. Long before the child gets to know God, the child gets to know you. And his respect for you will translate into respect for other authority figures. The second level of respect is respect for God. Very quickly, let your child understand that God must be honored. That God must be honored. Now, if you don't do it in your house, if you don't lift God up, if you don't honor God, if there is no reverence for God, if you take the name of God in vain, if you curse with the name of God, then don't expect your child to have any respect for God's authority. Look at the Ten Commandments. The first three of them talk about respect for God, honoring God. Let your child know early on that his, cons his actions will have consequences on his relationship with God. When your child tells a lie, let them know not only is mommy or daddy upset, let them know that God is not happy about it. Number three, respect for authority figures. I'm talking teachers, Sunday school teachers, the police, workers in church. You need to teach your children to respect people in authority. Now, if you as the parent, every time a police car drives past, you curse the policeman out. Your child is not going to grow up respecting authority. Are you listening to me? So there are things that we model before our children. Sometimes a policeman will pull you or a traffic warden will give you a ticket and you don't like it. And maybe it's not fair. But you need to model respect for authority figures so that when your children grow up, they do the same. If your child watches you disobey an usher in church, it's only a matter of time before they talk back to ushers too. Number four, respect for corporate institutions, the church, the the school, the hospital, government buildings, the bank, 
the telephone booth, the underground. Again, children learn best by example. If you get up and walk out of a service before the end of the service, you have taught the child that the only thing that is important is himself and his own desires and convenience. Are you listening to me? When we were growing up and our parents took us to church, there was a sense of reverence that overwhelmed us as we got to the door. Who knows what I'm talking about? As you're coming to this, shh, we're going into the house of God now. And they almost begin to tiptoe. Now, I don't understand why they did that, but let me tell you what it did for us. It made us understand that when we come into this environment, we recognize that this institution stands for a purpose and it's for our benefit, and we respect what that institution stands for. When you go to the hospital and they tell you switch off your mobile phone, switch it off. You are passing instructions onto your children by doing things like that. Number five, Respect for adults. Teach your children how to behave around adults. And I think to start with, your children should never be allowed to call adults by their first name. Can I say that again? Your children should never be allowed to call adults by their first name. Don't introduce an adult to your child and say, Susie, meet Bob. That is nonsense. You say, meet Mr. Green or meet Aunt Helen. All right? Now, I know we live in a society, and this is not just a cultural thing. Hear me. One of the reasons why our, our society has degenerated and there is no regard for authority and there is no discipline in our schools is that from an early age, we teach children that they are equal to adults. That's not what my Bible says. Are you listening to me? Teach your child, when they meet an adult, to extend their hand and say good morning or good afternoon. Teach them how to behave around adults. Don't... Don't let them answer, yep, nope. <laughs> Teach them to speak properly. Amen. Teach them how to interact socially with people who are older than them. Uh, social graces, please. Thank you. You know, practice at home. Because one day you may need to introduce your child to the queen. And you don't want them to embarrass you. Now, there's a lot of parents who say, come on, come on, what's wrong with you? Say hello now. If you didn't teach them how to say hello, they won't. Hello. Now, let, let me deal with another side of that coin. There are some of you parents who insist that your children must kneel down or prostrate. And you say, you come from Africa. No, 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 no. No, that's taking it too far. It doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't make sense to them because it has no cultural relevance in this society. Kneeling down is not the same as respect. Prostrating is not the same as respect. Don't force your children to do that. But teach them how to respect adults. Teach them how to say please. Teach them how to say thank you. Teach them how to look up into adults' eyes and shake their hand and answer questions politely. Number six, respect for all people. Teach your children that all human beings are valuable in the eyes of God and they they misrespect everybody. When a man is walking down the street and your child says, Mommy, that man is fat. Teach your child that's not right. That's impolite. You don't say that. Teach them how to say excuse me, how to say please in public. Teach them how to respect their own mates in school, even if they don't agree with that mate. Are you hearing me? And finally, teach your child to respect himself. When we were growing up, there was a very common saying back home, respect yourself. <laughs> But the point is this, ladies and gentlemen, help your child to see himself as a VIP. Teach your child from a young age to carry himself or herself with dignity. Teach your girls that they are princesses and there are certain things they should not get involved in. Now, I'm not talking about a super inflated ego. I am talking about self-respect. Scientists tell us that children who respect themselves learn to resist peer pressure. They do better academically. They take care of their personal hygiene. They have great dreams for the future. Teach your child to respect your child. Your, himself. If your child comes home and his uniform is torn, let him understand that it's not just about the money that it costs. Let him understand that it is undignified for him to wear torn clothes or allow himself to get into situations where his clothes tear. As your children begin to grow, teach them how to take care of their things, how to take care of their room because they need to respect themselves. Is somebody listening to me? The first thing you teach your child is respect. The second thing you teach your child is the word. Somebody say the word. This forms the foundation for every other value that you intend to teach your child. Turn your Bible with me to Deuteronomy 6. 
If you have a bookmark of Bible reading, put it there. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 4 to 7. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 7. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, is the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Amen. Did you see that in your Bible? Three important elements here. Number one, before you can teach your child the word, the word must be in your heart. Carefully examine your own relationship with God. Nothing can happen through you unless it first happens to you. Only one amen. amen. Remember that the word discipline comes from the word disciple. The word disciple, ladies and gentlemen, means a follower. It means one who mimics or imitates another. Come with me to Philippians 4 verse 9. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. Many of us know Philippians 4, 19. Now let's look at Philippians 4, 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Are you hearing me, ladies and gentlemen? This is what you must be able to tell your children. Say the things that you've learned from me, the things that you've received from me, the things you've heard me say, the things you've seen me do. Those are the things that you must do. Any habit that you don't want your child to pick up, you jettison that habit in your life. Any vice that you don't want to see in your children, get rid of it in your life. Children are better at doing what we do than they are at doing what we say. Now, not only must it be in your heart, the Bible says, you, number two, you must be diligent. Go back now to Deuteronomy 6. You must be diligent in teaching the word to your children. Operative word here, diligent. Somebody say diligent. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, children will not catch the word of God automatically. The word of God is not that infectious. Don't leave the job to the Sunday school. You cannot be passive or half-hearted or lackadaisical in your approach. You must give it your full attention. Ladies and gentlemen, teaching children the word is serious business. Are you hearing me? The word diligent in this scripture actually comes from a word that means early. Early. Let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 13, Proverbs 13, verse 24. Proverbs 13, 24. He who spears his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. The margin of my Bible, where it says promptly, it actually says early. Let me give you another one. 19, Proverbs 19, verse 18. Chasing your son while there is hope, and do not set your heart on his destruction. Now, if you don't discipline your child when he's two, don't expect to be able to discipline him when he's 22. If you don't teach your child to pick up his toys when he's six, don't expect him to tidy his room when he's 16. There are some parents who start smacking their children when the child is, is 19 years old. You didn't smack him when he was 19 months. Now you want to smack him when he's 19 years and why are you surprised that he smacks you back? I trust that this message has enriched you and challenged you to be all that you can be. If you have any questions, comments or prayer requests about what you have heard today, do not hesitate to contact me using the details on your screen and I will be glad to serve you as best as I can. Also, if you happen to be in or visiting the London, Excess or Kent area of the United Kingdom, we encourage you to come and worship with us at New Wine Church. All our service details are on your screen right now. Well, till the next time on Maximize Life. God bless you. We hope you have been blessed by today's broadcast. For more details about the dynamic ministry of Dr. Tayo Adeyemi, please contact us using the details on your screen or visit newwine.co.uk.